Hello everybody. What we're going to look at today is an Edison three wire circuit um, with two loads connected to individual phases and then a load connected essentially line to line. So I want to break this up to make sure we take this nice and slow. We can establish some polarities. We'll do this in multiple videos just to make sure that we can go through this point by point and understand each concept because really as we go through this, we'll have to be able to understand from one how one thing is leading into the next. So we can do this with a DC circuit and establish polarity because it would be constant throughout the operation of that circuit based on how I connect my uh, source. If I have an AC circuit, we can still do this analysis, but it would be essentially the idea of freezing time, stopping the polarity maybe in the positive half of our sine wave and look at what is taking place at that one point of time. The analogy still works for AC or a DC circuit, both are accurate, and then it helps us to understand what is happening with this conductor itself. So let's say we have a 120 volt source and a 120 volt source. What Edison figured out is that if we connect this, as long as they, if they have equal but opposite polarities, we'll have these two voltages add together. It applies with Kirchhoff's voltage law, everything follows suit. So let's just make this a DC circuit right now, just as so we can establish polarity a little bit simpler. If it's an AC circuit, it still works. The concepts still apply. We'll just have to freeze time. So let's just keep it a DC circuit. So on my DC circuit, if I looked at the cells that I'm going to use and I established this as my negative terminal of my battery or negative terminal of my power supply, the other side would have to be a positive. Then I would look at this power supply. And if I wanted to connect these so the voltage is added together, I would have to connect them and orient them so my negative terminal was here that would be connected with the positive and my positive terminal would be connected here. Then if we actually look, we apply what we may understand already about Kirchhoff's voltage law. If I look at the potential difference across the entire source, it is a negative and a positive. That's what I need in order to establish a potential difference and for those two values to add together. If we want to look at Kirchhoff's voltage law, I could start right here and I could say, look, this is a positive terminal, so a positive 120 plus a positive 120 would equal 240 volts. So if we're going to go back to our AC circuit, a lot of our single phase AC circuits, if we had this taking place, um, we could see some nominal voltages that could say something like 120 slash 240. So what that voltage is representing, this 120 is an individual um, line conductor to our neutral or our identified conductor. In this case, it would be a neutral conductor. This 240 volts would represent the line one to line two scenario of a single phase circuit. So if we're starting from there, what we need to do is talk about our loads quickly. If we look at this load, we're just going to pick some arbitrary values. We're going to look at what is happening with those and how it establishes our polarity. Let's say load one is operating at 15 amps. And load two is operating at, um, let's say we're operating at 10 amps. Okay, that's fantastic. That's the characteristic of the load when I hook it up. I can take a clamp on ammeter, measure it right on this conductor, measure 10 amps, that's fantastic. Okay, and let's also utilize our load that's connected to our two line conductors. Let's say that it is operating at seven amps. So when we're going to go through and look at, what we're gonna try and eventually get to is understand what happens, what is the voltage across load one in this scenario? What is the voltage across load two in this scenario? And then what is the voltage across load three in this scenario? Well, we know based on some properties of voltage drops, if we were just to analyze this circuit, I know if I have 120 volts, based on these two oppositions, I will not have 120 volts across this load. Same goes down for here. And if we keep those tr principles true, 
My source is 240, counting for voltage drops. I will not have 240 volts across that load, but I should have something close. So as I go through this, for myself, what I like to do is I like to establish that polarity. And I like to draw, okay, what use some arrows represent what's happening with current. So I'm going to say that 7 amps is flowing through this load. That's what it's operating at. So at that point, entering the load, 7 amps. Well, this is an example of a series circuit. There's one path here. So what's entering this load has to also be leaving this load. So current has nowhere else to go, but it has to travel to this point. So I will have seven points and I will have seven amps entering that junction as well. And I like to trace this all the way back. So what do I have? If I have seven amps flowing into this load, that means I have to have seven amps at this point and I must have seven amps at that junction. So I have seven amps flowing through my circuit in that direction. Okay? And I just picked this based on the polarity of my source and I just picked, okay, I'm going to establish that current fl is flowing in that direction for this part of my circuit. So now that I have this established, what I can do is actually use the principle of electron flow and determine, well, what is the polarity of this component right here? If this is an electrical circuit, this could be a resistor, depending, maybe we have a breadboard circuit, maybe we have a little circuit board, um, or maybe we actually have a full electrical circuit that we're operating with. So what does this represent? This represents, in this case, I'm going to use this, this is the conductor that I actually use to hook up this load with. This conductor has a small opposition. I said that was 0.1 ohms. That way I could say I used the same uh, conductor to this entire circuit. So you can use this again, conventional flow or electron flow. It doesn't matter. I'm going to use uh, electron flow just to show negative to positive through my circuit. So if current is flowing negative to positive, then this has to be a negative as it's flowing through. I would have a collection of electrons there and I would have a deficiency at that point. Current is flowing through the load, so I would have a negative at this point and a positive at that point. As I continue, I will have a negative and a positive. What this helps us to do is to see what is happening with the voltage. So if I know that 15 amps is going to be flowing through this load, that's what it's operating at, I can establish the same thing here. 15 amps flowing through the load has to be entering this junction. I have 10 amps flowing through this load. Okay. Well, if I have 15 amps flowing through this load, entering this junction, and I only have 10 leaving, Kirchhoff's current law said, well, you, it can't just disappear. So what is happening? I am having 5 amps, or the difference, on this conductor. If we understand what the name of this conductor is, our neutral conductor, the whole purpose of a neutral conductor is to carry the unbalanced load, well, that's the unbalanced. That's the difference between load 1 and load 2 is 5 amps. Kirchhoff said, look, everything that's entering a junction has to be leaving the junction. So I have 15 amps entering this junction right here. I must have 15 amps leaving. I have 10 amps leaving through this direction. I have 5 amps leaving through that direction. So we have all of our current accounted for. So if we understand that, we can look up here. I have 7 amps that's flowing through this load. And I have 15 amps flowing through this load. So therefore, the current entering this junction must be 7 plus 15. So I would have 22 amps on that conductor. I can go down to the bottom now. If I have 10 amps flowing through this load, that means there's 10 amps entering this junction at this point. So I must have 17 amps flowing on this conductor. Remember the principle of our neutral. What is the whole point of the neutral? It is to carry the in unbalanced load. If I look at my line conductor here and my line conductor here, okay, we can call them an ungrounded conductor, a hot conductor. If I look at this, my line conductor or my hot is 22 amps and 17 amps. The difference or the unbalance between 22 and 17 is 5. And look what's established on our neutral current is that 5 amps.
So now that I know what direction this neutral current is going and the direction of these values, I can also place a polarity for these values. And I know that this is flowing negative through positive. Current is flowing from negative to positive through that source. Okay? Look at the direction of current here. It is flowing negative to positive. It's actually different. It's flowing in a different direction. It is flowing in the same direction from here, but it is flowing back to our source at this point. On this, I will have a negative and a positive. And for me, the last double check that I like to do, as I've worked right to left through this circuit, what I like to do is my last opposition here before my source, this opposition, or sorry, this polarity should match the polarity that I've given at the source. This polarity here should match the polarity that I've given at the source. So hopefully this has helped just to establish the polarity using the direction of current flow. Upcoming videos, we're going to talk about, okay, how can I establish what is the voltage drop at this point now? What is the voltage drops across my loads? Hope this has helped. We'll see you in the next one.